but I wanted to share a message that goes way past Easter, right? This is not like an Easter message, but there's revelation in it. And uh, we need personal resurrection. We need life. We need, wow, just look around in your life and look at everything that's um, uh, like flat, dead, hopeless, dark, uh, just whatever, despairy. <laughs> um, we need resurrection. And we need to be reminded. That's what's good about doing, you know, celebrating Easter, different holidays like that, because it reminds us. And this is not putting in your time for Jesus. Like he like put in his time for you. So, you know, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And no one comes to the father except through me. And that's not that that's a that is a statement that is an invitation for all humanity. Right. But God is so jealous for his kids, every single one of his kids. If you're a human being, whether you do breath or not, you're his child. And obviously you do breath if you're listening to this, but uh that is an invitation for all humanity. So the exclusivity of that statement is because Jesus is the one that sacrificed for you, that shows you, that that joined himself to you. And because of that, and because God paid a price for you, um, he is the one to say, listen, you're not going to experience life apart from me. There is no life apart from me. Actually, everything apart from me is a delusion because God is one with his creation. No, nowhere more so than with his sons and daughters. So I thought I'd go back and um, review some stuff out of Romans five and six and maybe a little bit with eight. We're going to skip seven because we'll just skip seven and I'm not going to read the whole thing. So don't panic. But um uh, but I, I wanted to review this because we need to be reminded. I think in our culture today, um, between deconstruction, which is good and bad, um, and it's like really not sexy um, to be following Christ. Uh, it's not sexy to, uh, to, um, to actually take a stand for, oh my goodness, sin, uh, you know, and, and, and for good reason in some places and for bad reason in other places, sin is the thing. The reason why God hates sin is because it hurts us. It harms us. I hate everything. Like you mess with my kids. Mm, I'm hating it. Right. Um, and sin is an entity that brings death. Okay. And so God hates it. but. And this is why I take unction to the God hates the sin, but loves the sinner, because that is saying that, wow, um, your identity is a sinner. Now we act like sinners, don't we? Right. Do, do we do, do we hate? Do we kill? Do we steal? Do we accuse? Do we judge? Pick a card, any card. Right. Um, and yes, we do. Um, as believers and unbelievers, you know, the issue with believing as unbelievers uh, is the issue of belief. Okay. Because God already did everything for us as humanity collectively, we either believe or don't believe. And then there's extents to which we believe and extents, which we still don't believe. And that's God's God's heart as love to woo us, to woo our hearts, to believe, to believe him, to trust him as, as a human race. And as the church, we've done a good job and a church, we've done a horrible job. We've just, it's a very mixed bag, but you know, when you go outside the church and a lot of people in their deconstruction process go outside like the church, I'm not going to do institutional religion, but then you think, well, is that working so much greater? 
because it's really a question of how much we are tracking with our original design. How much are we tracking with the one who loved us and gave himself up for us? Because if we're trying to find life outside of Christ, um, there is no life outside of Christ. There is no life outside of life. There is no light outside of light. There is no truth outside of truth. There's no way outside of the one who is the way. And sometimes we represent it well, and sometimes we represent it abysmally, okay? But it's he's still the way, the truth, and the life. He's still the resurrection and the life. So let's dive into some of this. Um, Romans 6, uh, 3, let me make sure I'm getting the right translation. No, let's go to Romans uh, uh, 5, 1. It says, our faith in, in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. Okay, I wanted to read that because the truth is that you are flawless in his eyes. He knows you, okay? And the problem is, you don't know you. You don't know him and you don't know you. And that's my problem too, right? To very, to, you know, relative extents. Because when we don't know who he is and we don't know who we are, we will not act out of the flawlessness of who we are. And when we act out of the flawlessness of who we are, our behavior becomes more and more flawless. This is conformity into the image of Christ. And so since he declares you flawless, he wants to heal your heart so that you see yourself as flawless. And, and then out of that place, act accordingly as a byproduct. Okay. So this is the starting point. Aren't you happy? <laughs> it says, this means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what the Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us, past tense. Our faith guarantees us permanent access into his marvelous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. God wants you to experience his glory. This is the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God, where we are unveiled as glorious in his image, right? and reflecting his likeness and our behavior is coming up to that bar, conforming to the image of Christ. It says, um, but that's not all. This feels like an infomercial, like, and, and wait, there's more. Uh, even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient endurance. And the patient endurance will redefine our character and proven character leads us back to hope. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. But Christ, skipping down to verse eight, proved God's passionate love for us by dying in our place while we were still lost and ungodly. If there's places in you that feel lost and are acting in God ungodly ways, you've forgotten that you're flawless or you've never learned that you're flawless or maybe religion taught you that you were a sinner. Okay. No, you sin because you don't know who you are, that, that you're flawless. If while we were still enemies, God fully reconciled us to himself through the death of his son, then, then something greater than friendship is ours. Now we are at peace with God because we share his resurrection life. How much more will we be rescued from sin's dominion? You know, freedom is not, um, not that it's okay to sin. It's not. Freedom is, the, is being who you are which is in the in image and likeness of a flawless God who is lovely, who sacrifices for his kids, who serves us to help us come to that point. And then we can be who we are. And then sin slips off of us because it's not who we are. It's not who we are. And I think in our rebellion against religious condemnation, we go to this ditch of, well, there's no such thing as sin. It's like, are you kidding? And what's weird about that is a lot of times in going against that, we're pointing fingers at the religious people and saying they're sinning, but we're saying we're not. It's just, it's crazy. 
we're, you know what, we're just massively confused. <laughs> we need help. Thank you, Jesus. It says when Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience and death was the result. So death comes from acting out of who we, who we are not acting out of the shadow realm of who we are not. This is why God hates sin, right? It says for the magnitude of the gift far outweighs the transgression, uh, the crime, death once held its grip by the blunder of one man, death reigned as king over humanity. But now how much more are we in the grip of grace and to continue reigning as kings in life, enjoying the regal freedom through the gift of purchase righteous in the one and only Jesus, the Messiah. In other words, condemnation came upon all people through one transgression. So through the righteous act of Jesus' sacrifice, the perfect righteous makes us right with God and lead us, leads us into a victorious life is now available to all, all. Okay, so this is a message for humanity. It's not a message for, uh, for Christians. It is a message for Christians, those who follow Christ. Uh, but there are people who are following Christ who may not know his name yet. There are people that are following, uh, following Christ that know him, but haven't been able to connect. Oh, wow, this is that. This is you. You know, the church has done such a horrible job in a lot of ways and a great job in other ways, right? It's a mixed bag um, that we've made the name of Jesus is stench to people. Uh, hypocrisy will do that, right? That's why, you know, that's why God kind of lambasted the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees are unfortunately are alive and very unwell. And, um, and, and, and we all have a little bit of Pharisee and Sadducee in us. Any place where we're tending to point the finger is judge, dang, 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 dang. And I don't care if it's in Jesus name, I don't care if you got a scripture associated with it. We got it all. We need, we desperately need to be healed in how we track with God and how we track with people uh, and how, how much condemnation we're receiving and how much condemnation we're giving, right? There is no condemnation. Uh, it says in, um, let me go down into Romans 6, 1. So what do we do then? Do we persist in sin, a fallen way of being, so that God's kindness and grace will increase? What a terrible thought. Uh, you can interpret that as hell no, right? We have died want to sin, a fallen way of being once, once and for all, as a dead man passes away from this life. So how could we li live under sin's, uh, sin's rule a minute moment? Or have you forgotten that all of us, I love the all, we're immersed into union with Christ, the anointed one, we're anointed one, we're immersed into union with his death, sharing in his death, uh, by our baptism means that we are co-buried with him so that when the father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with him. We have been co-resurrected with him so that we can be empowered to walk in the freshness of life. And a lot of us, we maybe we've gotten weary and well-doing. Uh, we need to go back to the foundation of being co-resurrected so that we were we are empowered this is a resurrection from the dead right so if god be for us who the hell can be against us absolutely nobody that's catherine the hell part i added <laughs> um uh, I, uh verse six could it be any clearer we know in our confusion we need clarity so let's just grab a hold of it, that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power. Anything that says you're not flawless in the image of God, in his image and likeness, your original design, that's been deprived of its power. For we have been pro, pro we were co-crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us so that we would not continue to live one moment submitted under sin's power. What is, what is the enemy of our souls, however you define that, accusing you of? And, you know, we get in all these, we're in all these cultural wars, trans, not trans, you know, LGBTQ, like straight, like, I mean, pick a card, any card 
right? Republican, Democrat, conservative, you know, liberal, you know, whatever, mass, no mass, vaccine, no vaccine. We're in all these ridiculous battles. And it's like, wow, um, this is not the battle. It's not the battle. Are there sinful ways of being? Yeah, there sure are. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are. Um, but that's not the battle. The battle is to awaken people to who they are. And that crap just sheds off because it's a level playing ground. So while we're, while we're pointing finger against things that are frank sin and that are hurting people, um, we're also partying with the accuser. And then also you start to um, apologize for um, your walk with Christ. It's like, no, you don't need to do that. So tell me what benefit from doing these things that you're now ashamed of. It left you with nothing but a legacy of shame and death for sins, meager, meager wages is death. But God's lavish gift, gift I love it. It's a little dab will not do, is life eternal found in your union with our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Um, and you know what? Uh, and then, and then if, I, I like to skip Romans seven because I don't want to get off into the weeds of um, like this shadow boxing with a fallen self, right? Because the thing is, you uh, submit to sin, do the things you don't want to do, and don't do the things you do want to do because you've forgotten who you are, or you never knew who you are. And that's the Holy Spirit and is awakening in us. So you're a son, you're a daughter, skipping to Romans 8. You're a son, you're a daughter, awaken to that. Our spirit says with your spirit, I'm an adopted son and daughter. And because of that, I can be unveiled from glory to glory to glory and creation is released from its bondage. That is the resurrection message. Christ died for humanity as humanity. So sin would not fall into the abyss of death because we don't know who he is and we don't know who we are. <clears throat> we don't know because of that because we don't know God who is really love and what really is love. We don't know who we are made in the image and likeness of the person who is love, who is truth, who is light, who is glory, who is life. We don't know that. And because of that, we act in fallen ways of being and we reap death and we sow death. And God is like, nah. No, I'm not going to leave my son, my daughter alone. And then we splinter off into all these different religions and all these different um, uh, um, factions within religions. And we're just finger pointing and it is death. And how do we get out? Oh, my God, it's Christ. It's the one who dove into every fallen way of being, every hopeless way of being, everything that engenders death and all the effects of death, mind, will, emotions, body, soul, spirit, all of that. Swoop that up in himself on behalf of his kids that he's wild about in the person of Christ, in union with Father, God, and spirit, and brought us up to new life. So, wow we can track with what's always been so that we can be unveiled and we can come into the glorious freedom and share it that we can be one as God and the, and, and as father God and Jesus and Holy spirit are one that we can love as he loves. Listen in the, in the greatest pressure packed, we can transcend it because we've already, we are already seated in heavenly places far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world or this age, but in the age to come, in the age of the law and the age of grace. And that's what we're under. Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing for you to do for you today, reminding you of what's already true about you and what's true about every single human being you will ever bump into the one in front of you and that you can love as he loves and share and bring them into freedom just as you are experienced freedom. Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing. Have a great day. Happy Easter for all of those who are, this is an Easter message and happy Easter, whether it's any other day of the year, because we can rejoice in that. Love you guys. Have a great day.